Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. My name is Joni Young if you're new here and today this is what I'm going to show you all how to paint. So stay tuned and hit subscribe. Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how to play, paint this pretty beachscape uh, with the sun starting to set and we're going to have some dramatic shadows going on down here at the bottom. I'm going to be using the following colors on a 12 by 18 canvas today. Got titanium white, prism, purple violet, phthalo blue, light blue permanent, neon orange, and cadmium yellow light hue. So let's go over uh, the beginning stages of this painting. What we want to start off with doing first of all is building up uh, the background. So for the background, I'm going to be using my white and my light blue permanent. I'll also be using a little bit of purple with the blue um, to create some soft shadows that will be complementary in color to the orange that we're going to mix with white. And you'll see this start to take shape as we build up from the background to the foreground. So hope you guys are excited to get started on this painting. Be sure to hit subscribe and let's get started. I'm going to start off with my number 30 filbert brush. I'm going to get the canvas a little bit wet. Just taking a bit of water here. Getting the canvas wet first really helps uh, to blend all the paint out of your brush a lot easier. So anybody having trouble with blending their acrylics and feeling like your acrylics are drying out so fast and you can't keep up, this is the cheapest <laughs> tip for you guys. You don't have to buy those slow drying mediums. Um, unless you are a really slow painter, they can be beneficial, but just keep in mind if you're going to add a slow drying medium to your acrylics, they're going to act more like oils. So it may be a little bit frustrating, frustrating, um, and you'll have a hard time adding your highlights and it might be just a little bit tough for you to keep up. Okay. So I'm going to take my light blue and just start applying it over the top. See, quite easily I can do this because I've got the, the wet canvas underneath. Okay, I'm just gonna start leaving some spaces now. I know I want my sun to be right about here, so just gonna leave that white. Okay, and then right away, without washing my brush off, I'm gonna take some white and a little bit of the purple. I'll mix these colors up to make a pretty violet color. Okay, and I'm just gonna start adding a little bit up at the top. I'm just going to enhance that blue and start building up to some clouds so you can use your brush a couple ways just using the very tip of it you can create these skinnier lines and little dabs and pulls for some smaller clouds and then you can use the full width like this Cover up those larger areas much easier and quicker. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit more of my by our prism purple violet as well as a tiny bit of my phthalo blue, a little bit of white. And I'm just going to add the horizon line now. I'm going to add it right here, pull across. Back and forth. Then I'm going to add a little bit of white. Softly back and forth. We know it'll dry a little bit darker. And we definitely want the water, the background, to be lighter than the foreground that's going to be in that dramatic, beautiful, moody, purpley blue shadow. Okay, I'm going to wash my brush up. We'll start coming in with the next color. Okay, 
Okay, with a clean brush, same brush, white and the orange. I'm going to start overlapping some of the blue and the purple. This will give us some smoky tones, those really gentle mid-tones that are so important. Come right about the horizon here and pull across. And we're going to have our sun right about here, so we want to make everything we have go around it. I'm going to use some of this purple here to add around the sun. Okay, I'm going to go back and add some more. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of the cadmium yellow light, mix that up as well. That's going to change the color a little bit, see? slide my brush wiggle get it nice and flat together on the end again and I'm just gonna pull some lines in here ripples and highlights in the water I'll take a little bit more white gently add that over top I'm going to wash this brush out and use a size smaller, a few sizes smaller. I'm going to go to a number 16. I'm going to get it a little wet and I'm going to take the blue and the violet and I'm going to start adding some clouds in here. So these are going to be a little bit darker. Just a few little lines and then little wiggles and dabs. Get a little bit of water on my brush. So we'll just pull and slide our brush, making these thin stretchy looking clouds that gives the sky that peacefulness. And then come along the horizon again. Gently pull and flick. See how the brush is starting to split apart like this? I love it when that happens for creating some really simple and instant lines wherever you need them. In this case, the shadows and ripples in the water. Okay, what I want to do is take a little bit of white now. Mix that up and we're going to come inside the clouds and make them a little softer looking. And you can even start, you can change up the direction of some of your clouds just by pulling on an angle a little bit. 
wiggle, wiggle, up, wiggle, wiggle, and then up. A little bit of water on my brush. So you can add all those pretty little soft peaks within the sunset just by wiggling and turning your brush just on a little bit of an angle. Again, I'm just adding a little bit of white here and coming inside. This will give you more of a creamy looking blended looking cloud. Okay, I'm going to take a little bit of white, my orange and yellow again. And I'm going to add the next layers. Let's mix up a little bit more. And a few more ripples here. And I'll add a little bit up in the sky as well. We'll play on those shadows up there. A little drip happen right there, so I'm just going to go over that. A little bit of purple and blue. I'm going to take with a clean brush, white, and I'm going to go ahead and add it right here, nice and bright. Take a little bit more white and purple, blue. And I'm going to add some more shadows around the edges. It's going to help brighten our sun up, help draw our eye in. Now I just picked up a little bit of water, so that's going to help blend. I'm 
and do the same thing over here. You'll see now the sun is starting to look a little bit brighter. Okay, so I think we're ready to start coming in with this area down here. And I'm going to use a little bit of a larger brush. I'll use my number 12 Filbert. And I'm going to take purple and blue. Nothing else. And I'm going to start to just tap. Oh, look at those colors together. So pretty. Come down. So we're going to tap in here where we're going to have that tall grass. And then across. Definitely need some more paint. take that purple and we'll go up like we did here so we'll have a little bank on either side and then an open view right here just going to start adding little highlights in the sand Take a little bit of my peach color with the purple and everything else in there, and this will give us kind of a more of a sand color, but still in shadow. So we just have a little bit of warmth to balance all the cool tones that we've got. your brush kind of just on the side like this and create little scoops that'll give you those higher parts in the sand and the darker areas will be where it dips down and there's some shadow okay I think we're start we're ready to start coming in with our grass I'm just trying to get out the last little bit of uh, remaining prism violet here. Now I just added a little bit of burnt sienna. I may or may not use this, but I might. So I'm just going to add that uh, as well as some black. And this is the yellow that I'm using today by Windsor & Newton. Cadmium yellow, medium hue. I think I said it, I think I said it was light hue before. 
um, but either one will work. I also have a, a light hue that I use from time to time. This is the one that I use sometimes, and it's the light hue. So this one's a little bit more on the cool side. And this one's a little bit more on the warm side. Okay, so I've got a cool brush I'm going to show you guys how to use today. If you don't have this one, you can use a regular fan brush. This is called a Rake Wisp or Even Tail. It's a number three. And I'm going to get it really wet to start. It's like picture using a liner brush. They're all, it's all like a bunch of liner brushes. So with liner brushes, we need water. I'm going to take my purple, a little bit of black, and I'm going to use some of that burnt sienna. I think that will be a nice addition. And I'm going to start down here. And I'm just going to start fanning. I want to work it in to this color gradually so it starts to kind of disappear into that bluey purple underneath. Okay, I'll take a little bit more. And I'm just going to start pushing, gently pulling. Sometimes I'm going to turn the brush on its side like this. I'm going to get a little bit more water. And picture it being really breezy, that ocean breeze. So they're, they're all going in different directions. I'm going to overlap some of them so it looks a little bit thicker. Okay, I'm going to come in on the other side and do the same thing. Black, burnt sienna, and purple, and water. So I'll start. I'm just sliding side to side. And then I'm going to start to curve over here. I want them to feel like they're kind of inviting us in, turning this way, turning this way, drawing us into the center. And we'll have some down here below or off to the side. Okay, I'm going to get my brush wet again, not wash it out, and go right into my yellow. That's the color I want, this really muddy, almost yellow ochre. And very lightly, I'm just going to start adding it, layering over top. Try to not over blend or you'll lose your highlights and your shadows. You'll just be left with one very flat color. I have a lot of paint building up on the end of my brush, so I'm going to 
wash it out. And right in here, I want to go in and add a little bit more purple just to gradually get the two together there, blend in a little bit more gradually like it was too abrupt with like just blue purple and then that yellow. Use a little bit more purple here so you can always come back and add some dark over top of your light. You can add a few little ways push and, and tap. Sometimes the tall grass, I don't know what they're called, they have the just the little furry ends on them. I just want to balance out, this is looking a little bit too blue and I want to add a little bit more purple in here. So, so all I'm going to do is just balance out that tone. So a little bit of purple and around there. This side has enough purple. Okay, I'm going to take more orange and yellow with a small filbert I'm using. This one's a number two. Add a little bit of the orange and yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to add a little bit more color in here. Saturate this a little bit more just to help that sun stand out. right there. Okay, and back into the blue, purple, and white. Add some smaller clouds in here. inside them with some white to soften. It helps to make them look far away and blend them a little bit better. And then I'll finish off with some more ripples right here. I'm going to go back over into my orange with the white. And then more white. Right underneath the clouds. This is when you can just come back and add a little bit more of the uh, peachy colors, the yellows, oranges, and add little hints like this. 
add a little bit more life to your clouds and sunset if you want. Okay, I'm going to come back. To my white, a little bit of purple there, a little bit of orange and yellow. Just gonna add a little bit more in the sand here now, just kind of with a, a dryish brush. There's not a lot of water on my brush. I think we can finish this painting off with a couple of little birds. I'm just going to use, uh, this is a zero, but any liner brush, you can use any liner brush that you want. I'm just going to get my brush a little bit wet and I'll just use this. I want them to look uh, more in silhouette, but not completely black. I think just this purple tinted with a little bit of white will work. I'll have a little drip there. So maybe I'm just going to do these really, really simply. Just a little down here and then a little flick. We'll just do a few of these. A little thicker in the middle. that little drip there. I'm going to take a tiny bit of white and just add a little bit Right under the wings. Okay, almost done. I'm going to add a little bit more to some of these tall pieces of grass. those little things. I don't know what they're called. Let me know in the comments. I want to say like wheatgrass, but I don't know if it is wheatgrass. Maybe it is. You guys will let me know in the comments. I'm just going to take a little bit more of my yellow and just overlap. Bring in a little bit more gold here. So see, if you don't have one of those wisp brushes, you can just use a liner brush. It just takes a little bit longer. Just 
that purple. It's tinted with a little bit of black, that's okay. And instead of using my finger, <laughs> I'll take the time to grab another brush just to help blend that out. A little bit of black. Just for some here in the French that are going to be a lot more in shadow. It's all about taking the time to build those layers up. And just create a lot more life and depth in your painting when you take the time to do this. And then I'm just going to gently, gently wiggle and blend that out so it just kind of disappears. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. And you want to subscribe to my channel, give this video a like and let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks so much for joining me today. I wish you guys well and happy painting. I'll see you all very soon in another video. Bye.